bit of consolidation going on? A little bit of consolidation. I've just got the intraday graph behind me and as you can see, if you didn't know that the market was up by 0.3%, it's quite a bearish looking chart. We started off well because we did see a good session in the US. In fact, the Dow Jones Industrial Average now in the black for the year. And then of course that fantastic data coming out domestically. We did see not only retail sales up by half a percent better than expectations, but also capital expenditure numbers showing that businesses are still spending on investing and on their plans. So that was a positive and we saw the market jumping after that but as you can see in the afternoon all the way back lower again to finish just up 0.3 percent we did see strength in the energy the telecom as well as the property sectors but a lot of the gains in the energy and the property uh, sectors were half uh, compared to this morning and of course as Peter mentioned there's a lot of data coming out over the next couple of days tonight's really going to be about manufacturing we see PMI numbers coming out of Euro the eurozone and that's going to be very important we also see the ISM manufacturing numbers coming out of the US. I suppose uh, finding a little bit of support at that level? 4270, finding a little bit of support, but 4300 and 4324 are the other levels to watch out for. Now, we did break 4,324 points, which is a positive. So it is a positive that we did see a new high compared to that August 17, but I guess a bit of cautiousness because we weren't able to close above that. So it's not really a sign of huge strength. So a positive that we did make a new high compared to the 17th of August, but unfortunately not a close above that. And of course, signs coming out from around the globe probably still worrying investors so those macro headwinds are quite big and another sign that we saw today was uh, from Brazil where they saw a very surprised interest rate cut from 12 and a half percent to 12 percent and if you have a look at Brazil last year GDP growth was seven and a half percent they're seeing unemployment at record lows down at six percent they've been raising interest rates since April 2010 in fact just this year they've raised interest rates five times to try and contain inflation. So seeing quite strong growth over there in Brazil and yet they've come out and they've cut their interest rates by uh, 50 basis points. Now they've said that this is a timely reaction um, to mitigate the effects of the global economy in crisis. So this is a central bank talking and I guess a little bit of nervousness given that um, move by Brazil today. We talk about a bit of positive momentum for our broader market. It seems like you know Harvey Norman came out with a better than expected result. These retail sales have come out a little bit expected. Are they starting to get a little bit of positive momentum? I guess when we have a look at the retail space we can talk short term and we can talk long term and in the short term space choppy retail conditions means that we are going to see quite a bit of volatility so it could mean that these stocks do become even cheaper but for the long term uh, retail is a cyclical area and we will start to uh, see an uptick in the cycle and when we do start to sa see sales coming back up you know these valuations look very attractive compared uh, to where they were a couple of years ago so I guess the key when I'm looking at retail stocks is to choose the ones that aren't highly leveraged like David Jones to be able to ride out the volatility and the conditions that we're seeing in the retail sector at the moment. So I would be avoiding those retail stocks with a high level of gearing, but certainly those low gearing stocks for the long-term portfolio looking very attractive. Julia, what about Paladin? We, uh, we spoke about it yesterday, a preview of their uh, report card. It came in and they seemed to miss. And we did see a much bigger loss than expected, $82 million. Market consensus was a loss of $44 million. Now, it's been a very difficult environment for those uranium companies. The Japan nuclear disaster has put downward pressure on uranium prices, and we're seeing spot uranium prices now below 50 US a pound. Now, that's had a consequence for Paladin in that its operating costs have risen, especially at its uh, Kao Kira project, where uh, the cost of sales there has been 50 US, um, 50 US a pound. Now, the realized average uranium price over uh, the period was 55 US a pound. So you can see how they're struggling. We are seeing operating costs going up at one of their key projects. Not only that, they have had some one-off costs related to some acquisitions as well. Paladin shares though, have fallen so much. They have fantastic uranium assets. And if you do see a share price drop as it has done in the past year, you start to see it as a very attractive takeover target. And I think it's at the stage where it is a very attractive 
target uh, takeover target. We have seen takeover activity with uranium stocks this year, Bannerman, Kalari, and back when the, the Japan disaster happened, a lot of people talking about how uranium stocks have been looking cheap, but we haven't seen the stock price uh, trend reverse at all since, uh, since early in the year when that uh, Japan disaster hit. But I think now's the time when uranium is starting to look quite attractive, but unfortunately the conditions quite difficult with uranium spot prices dropping off substantially.